So today we'll be starting with the project evaluation unit number two. So we will discuss uh, the following set of topics under uh, unit number two. Uh, number one, it's all about uh, strategic assessment. And second one is the technical assessment. And third one is going to be cost benefit analysis. And uh, next one is going to be cash flow forecasting. And then uh, for uh, analyzing uh, this cost, we have a evaluation techniques. It has been called as cost benefit evaluation techniques. So followed by, we'll be discussing about uh, risk evaluation also. So the total uh, unit number two, it's all about the evaluations, uh, how you evaluate your project on various aspects. So that is what we are going to discuss under this particular unit. So we'll be starting with the strategy, then we'll be going into technical, then we'll be discussing about the cost and then cash flow, and then followed by what are the different techniques are being available for uh, evaluating the uh, cost and then uh, risk also we are going to evaluate on it. Right. So in this uh, first one, uh, project evaluation. So what is this project evaluation? So project evaluation is uh, being uh, normally carried out uh, stepwise. Uh, the first thing is, uh, we'll see the definition, what is this project evaluation? So project evaluation, which is nothing but uh, a step-by-step -step process of collecting, recording, and organizing the information. So about the project results. Already you might have done some projects and for that you might have got some results. So that results, uh, we are going to uh, collect it and we'll be recording how you achieve that particular result and as well as uh, uh, we need to get the informations from the beginning till the end, whatever it is happening related to the particular project will be get stored. So that is all about uh, project results. And second one is short-term outputs. So uh, short-term outputs like uh, small, small milestone, they'll be creating it to achieve that particular target. So which will be called as uh, uh, project deliverables, project deliverables. So whether we can able to deliver this particular uh, uh, requirement which has been uh, given uh, by the team. So whether it is possible. So that is called short-term outputs. So immediate results of activity. So they are saying immediate results of activity. And that has been short-term. It's, it's like a duration, maybe like a week or it may be uh, yeah, two weeks. So like that, it's been called as short-term outputs. And long-term outputs going to be something like uh, in a month or it may be like uh, uh, quarterly or it may be uh, uh, half yearly or it may be an annual also. So that has been called as a long-term output. So where uh, they, we need to identify what are the changes in the behavior of the system. So that is the first thing because as it's been get progressed, so there might be a changes that will happen in the system so that we need to uh, monitor and then accordingly we need to uh, uh, do some changes onto that. So that's why changes in the behavior, practice or policy resulting from the result. So for each and every uh, company, they have their own standards. So that has been nothing but a policy. So according to the policy, uh, they need to work and to achieve the goal. And uh, whether uh, this policy has been helping out to reach the goal, so they need to check on it. Or if there is any issues that they, they are facing on it, then accordingly, they need to go for doing the adjustments. So uh, either it will be called as a practice because it's day to day that you are doing it. So that's why it's being called as a practice. Uh, which will be uh, framed as a policy and you need to do. So something like morning, uh, we need to start the class by 9.30 and uh, first hour will be 50 minutes, second hour 50 minutes. So like that, we have created a policy and accordingly, which we are running on it. So it's been a practice. So from the practice, we need to see that what is the result which you, we can able to achieve it, whether we can able to achieve the target of uh, uh, five units, we can, whether we can able to complete with a stipulated time. So that is what the uh, ultimate aim behind it. That is a goal uh, for this particular semester, right? And if there is any uh, issues happening, accordingly, we need to go for doing the changes. So that's what it's being called as changes in behavior. Okay, so uh, any project, if you're taking up, uh, we need to have a short-term outputs as well as even long-term outputs. And along with that, the final result also we need to be considered. So this is being called as a project valuation. Right. So why uh, this project evaluation has become more important? What is the reason behind it? So that is what we are going to discuss in this uh, coming up slide. 
So project evaluation is important for answering the following questions. Number one, what progress has been made? What is the uh, status of your project? What is the current status of your project? So, so far, what is the progress that has been made on your project, which has been, you're working on it. So that is the first thing where we need an evaluation. Second one, where the desired outcome are being achieved and why? So whether we can able to, uh, whatever the outcome which we are expecting, whether we can able to achieve that. If it is achieved, then how you have been achieved it? In case if you are not able to achieve, then why you are not achieved? So all these things are all next set of questions. So that is also comes under project evaluation and whether the project can be refined to achieve better outcomes. So in case, if you are not able to achieve the outcome, what you have been expecting on it, then we can go for refining it. So why we need to refine? Because since we couldn't able to achieve whatever the target we set on it. So that is a case we need to go for refining it and accordingly we need to go for uh, try to achieve the better outcomes. So that is the uh, fourth questions. And the last one, which is the, do the project results justify the project inputs? So whatever the result that you're getting it, whether it has been justified, the input, whatever has been uh, given from the uh, various resources. So if it is coming, then if it has been justified, then it's fine, it's well and good, it's going on. In case if it, has, if it has not been justified, then we need to analyze on it. So where that evaluation is being going to help you out, right? So what are the challenges while monitoring and evaluating the project? So what are the challenges will be faced by a different uh, uh, persons as well as different resources be involved in the particular project. So that is what uh, uh, the next set of uh, uh, things which you are going to discuss on it. So getting the commitment to do it. So the first most important thing is uh, the people need to be get committed. So the, those who are working on the project, they need to be committed so that only they can able to complete the task. Otherwise it's become very difficult. So the commitment has become the most important aspects of any project. So that is one of the key challenge, right? So how will you know that whether they are committed, where we need to go for monitoring. So keep on monitoring the progress of the project. And through that, we'll come to know that whether they are going according to the plan, what are your been scheduled on it. In case if it is not going, so there is some issue which has been currently happening. So we need to identify what is that issue. So whether they are being exactly committed or for the namesake, they are working on it. So that is what they are trying to mean here. And establishing baselines at the beginning of the project. So beginning of the project, make sure that at least you should have draw the baseline. So baseline, which is something like uh, you need to have an overview of the entire project, what you are trying to do on it. And along with that, whatever module that has been assigned to the particular uh, group and that group baseline should be given. So this is the start date and this is the end date. And these are the activities being part of this particular uh, project. All those things need to be defined and should be given to them. So some basic stuff that need to be given so that only it will go uh, according to the plan what you have on it. So that is another thing. And uh, identifying realistic a quantitative and qualitative indicator. And again, uh, whenever you're going for identifying, make sure that uh, you should have some <coughs> sorry, quantitative and qualitative indicators. So uh, we need to uh, measure in terms of uh, how many people are being needed to work on this project and uh, what is the output that you're expecting uh, from uh, the set of people has been assigned for the particular task. So in terms of quantity, which is nothing that how many people need to work and what is the uh, output which you are expecting according to the standard has been set by the client or it has been set by your company. So that is called quality indicator. So these two things uh, which need to be identified in a realistic manner should not be like something uh, which is not achievable if you set us on a target, it's very difficult. So make sure that whenever you are trying to uh, set the target, it should be like uh, realistic one. So that is what they are trying to mean here. So otherwise uh, it's become very difficult. And even if you set the realistic one there, you need to monitor uh, in a continuous manner so that only the go in a smoother manner, right? Finding time to do it and sticking to do it. So here, the another important aspects, uh, whenever the task has been assigned, we need to uh, have to fix the timing, the time slot for each and every task that need to be get performed. 
and make sure that they are sticking to the time which has been already allotted. So otherwise, it will not go in a proper manner. So that's why they are trying to uh, mean here, we need to fix the time slot and make sure that it has been uh, completed on the time slot which has been already uh, created for the particular task. And getting feedback from your stakeholders and make sure that uh, whenever the task is being completed and it has been um, uh, given to the, the concerned stakeholders and make sure that uh, you are getting the feedback from them so that only you can able to progress further. Uh, because their feedback, which is going to provide you uh, kind of a uh, kind of a uh, booster where uh, you can uh, uh, move further. So that's the reason why feedback has become one of the key mechanism of any of the product that is going to be launched to market. So that's why you might have seen that in online, uh, they are getting the customer uh, feedbacks or customer reviews. So in terms of stars or in terms of uh, uh, some other uh, criteria, they are setting it accordingly. They are asked the uh, uh, customers to evaluate and they are asking to give the review. So once they are given the review and based on that, uh, they are uh, uh, that product has been uh, moving fast into the market. So that's the reason my feedback has become one of the key mechanism and uh, getting the proper feedback uh, with the uh, uh, from different stakeholders become uh, one of the key challenge and reporting back to your stakeholders. And again, it's not about only getting the feedback as well as once you completed your task or it has been under progress, all these informations that need to be uh, given back to the stakeholders and make sure that uh, they are getting the up-to-date information. So there should not be any lack in that. So if they are getting up-to-date information, so then they'll also be happy and uh, they'll also try to contribute to you and which will uh, uh, grow mutually. So that's the reason why uh, getting the, uh, 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 providing the report to the stakeholders become most important aspects, right? So uh, these are the challenges uh, when you are facing, when you go for a project evaluation and make sure that when you are facing all these challenges, you are adapting the uh, monitoring mechanism and through that you can able to monitor all these challenges and you can able to overcome it. Now, so the first uh, technique for uh, project evaluation, which is nothing but uh, strategic assessment. So what is this strategic planning? Each and every company at the beginning of the uh, year, they'll be having the annual strategic plan. So in this annual strategic plan, what they will do, they'll be going for uh, discussing about uh, what are the things they are going to perform uh, in the upcoming year and uh, what are the activities which will be assigned and what are the projects they are going to take and uh, how many people are going to be involved. All these things will be discussed at the beginning of the year itself. It's applicable for uh, many industries, including the academic institutions also. They'll be doing this annual strategic plan. Even our college also, we have annual strategic plan every year and we'll be doing it. And uh, we'll be uh, gathering and then we'll be having a discussion uh, in terms of college institution as a whole, and as well as even the department is also will be having a discussion. So uh, similar way for uh, uh, IT industry also, they'll be gathering, they'll be having an annual strategic plan. So they'll be discussing as a whole company and as well as uh, they'll be discussing as a unit also. So each and every unit, they'll be having an individual plan. Accordingly, they'll be start working on it. So that has been called as a strategic planning. So what are the things which will be discussed during the strategic planning? So strategic planning is being defined as an organization process of defining its strategy. So they'll be creating some strategy to complete the task which has been uh, assigned to them. So they need to plan out at the beginning itself so that only they can uh, they can able to finish on it. Or which has been called as a direction and making decision on allocating its resources to pursue this strategy, including its capital and people. So here mainly to uh, allocate the resources, they need to uh, make a decision. So we're all going to work on this particular project and uh, how many resources are being needed and uh, what is the percentage they are going to work on this particular project. All those things will be discussed and it will be fixed. So that is what uh, uh, the strategic planning they'll be doing on it. So mainly it's deal with what to do, what, what do we do, what do we do and for whom do we do and how do we excel. So here, what are the things supposed to be done and who are all is going to be do on it? 
and uh, when you are doing it how we can excel this particular process so all these things will be discussed during the strategic planning meet and after that only they'll go going for fixing it and then uh, uh, because when we are discussing on it there might be some changes will happen so somebody some people might object stating that i am not able to handle this particular thing so you can uh, give it to somebody else or uh, this things i can able to handle you can hand over to me so that i can uh, do it in a smoother manner so all these things will be discussed during the uh, strategic planning and then they'll be fixing on it so once it has been fixed then they'll be uh, start working towards achieving their particular goal whatever it has been discussed during the strategic planning meet so that is what uh, it's, it's been called as a strategic planning right now for uh, the strategic assessment the first criteria which is become part of your project evaluation this is the first one of the first criteria for evaluation so for evaluating and managing the projects the individual project should be seen as a component of program and hence need to do program management so here whenever you are try to do this uh, strategic assessment uh, make sure that it is basically nothing that uh, how you are going to evaluate and managing the projects so in this uh, the individual parts so individual parts in the sense the uh, minute things been uh, part of this particular project so uh, need to be considered as a component of a program and when you have become component of the program how you are going to uh, manage this so for that uh, we need to have a proper program management proper program management so that's what we are going to discuss in the next uh, set of uh, topics so program management so uh, there is an author called dc fens has been defined what is this program management your program as a group of projects that are managed in a coordinated way to gain benefits that would not be possible where the projects to be managed independently so here what uh, he is trying to explain is something like uh, the projects cannot be managed independently where we need to uh, involve multiple peoples and they need to coordinate among themselves so that only uh, it would be possible otherwise become impossible so that's what this particular definition has been uh, trying to uh, explain to you a program as a group of projects that are managed in a coordinated way should be in a coordinated way to gain benefits because ultimately we are trying to achieve something where we need to complete this particular task and that would not be possible where the projects to be managed independently so it's not possible if you are trying to manage independently a program in this context a collection of projects that all contribute uh, to the same overall organization goal so ultimately if you seen that uh, for each and every organization there will be a goal which has been already created so which is going to contribute towards that particular organization goal so that is what uh, uh, the program management is being does right and effective program management which is being required uh, that there will be a well defined program goal and that all the organization projects are selected and tuned to contribute uh, towards this particular goal so now when are you going for choosing any of the projects and make sure that that particular projects are uh, are been programmed according to the goal of just been set by the organization so that only it will be contributes towards the goal and we can able to achieve it so that is an uh, uh, another important aspects under program management uh, students up to this clear any any doubt program program management uh... Yes. This, uh, can you just uh, uh, explain that again, sir? Is it a role in the project management, or it is a technique which has been followed by the project manager? It's it's a technique. It's a technique. See, uh, it's not a role. Program management is not a role. It's a technique. So, uh, program management uh, something like uh, they'll be already having a program. So, for example, you are plan uh, plan to have one particular function. So, that function is being called as program and how you are going to manage that particular program that is important so for that we need to uh, need to be have a set of people been assign each and every role and they need to coordinate and they need to complete that particular uh, program so uh, how you can do it so it cannot be done in as a in independent way so we need to work as a group and we need to complete on it so that has been called as a program management so for example yeah uh, the, uh, there's a project manager who has two projects mm. uh, one is um, one is a social networking project and another one is a car rental system project mm. 
Okay. okay. So uh, these two projects are will be called as two dif like two different programs. Yes, two different programs. And uh, how you are going to manage that particular program to get the task completed? So where so, we... but what are the components of the program? Like components. projects are. Yeah. There okay. are two projects. So what are the how the components of the program will be different? Components are it depends on the project you get vary. See, for example, if you take about a, a car a showroom management system, where uh, there'll be a setup component. So uh, uh, in car showroom management, uh, they need to uh, automate the complete car, car uh, showroom management. Where there'll be employees, one aspects that is going to be one component, and uh, uh, customer is going to be another component. So like that, they'll be dividing into each and every component. And how you are going to manage that? How you are going to complete that particular program? So one is called uh, uh, something like employee management. Another one is being called as a customer management. So how you are going to handle that and how you are going to complete it? So for employee uh, uh, related tasks, if you want to automate it, so there are set of people who need to be work and they need to coordinate way and they need to complete that particular work. And similar way for assigning the task for customer management, where set of people will be working and they need to. Uh, coordinate among themselves and they need to complete on it. So it's starting from the analysis, the design, uh, coding, testing, everything has been involved in that. So the complete set has been called as a program and further the individual things, uh, something like a designing is going to be one component, analysis is going to be another component. So like that, uh, they'll be dividing into small, small component and it will be assigned to the people and they'll be working and they need to come get to complete the task. And how you're going to monitor that, whether they are able to complete the particular task on time, or is there is any uh, uh, disturbance are there, so that we need to identify. So that is all comes under a project man program management. Okay. But project management and program management seem to be a little like, uh, both are the same. Yeah, so see, the project how is this? all about the, uh, the Top whole level. project we are talking about. It. Program okay. management, they are dividing. That uh, project has been divided into various modules, right? So one of the module they are taking it, and that particular module uh, they are going to call it as one program. And that program, whether it is been going in a successful manner. So for that, we need to have some strategy. We need to plan out a strategy, and we need to adapt it, and then uh, it need to get completed. So that has been called as a program management because as a the entire thing is being called as a project project management but when you come to the program so from the project they are taking uh, one particular component and that the particular component they are treating as a program and how you are trying to complete that particular program for that what are the things you are doing on it so that has been called as a program management okay so for, so uh, for example in a project there is a payment gateway that is one yeah. program so yes. like they will plan for strategically what they will be planning sir in that like the strategic in this See, strategic, how what it will complete? Plan, uh, the resource, how many resources are going to work for this particular uh, payment gateway, whether it is one person or two or three or four, and how many days they are going to work, and uh, uh, how much uh, time they are going to work, and what is the amount has been involved in that, and what are the level of people are being involved, like something like starting from the junior uh, developer and uh, senior developer and the project manager and the uh, uh, top level people. So who are all being involved and for them each and every people have a different level of payment that need to be done. So that also they need to uh, assess it. So that has been called as a strategic assessment. Simply they cannot uh, say that uh, uh, payment gateway you can do it. So they cannot assign something like that. So they need to properly uh, plan it. So stating that the four set of people are going to work for this particular payment gateway mm -hmm. and uh, first person is going to be a uh, lower level, second person is going to be a mid level and the, the Next to level people are going to be top level. And for them, uh, how many days they are going to work and uh, how many hours they are going to work and what is the wages for them, all those things need to be defined. So that is all comes under uh, uh, strategic assessment. That will be uh, happened during the beginning of the year itself. Uh, is that clear? clear sir, yeah. oh, the project is completely divided into components and they are working on with different components. They are managing. Okay. See, uh, as a whole, but components they are managing. Yes, yes, yes. Correct. Okay, sir. See, yes, uh, yes. Uh, uh, see uh, I can give you the example uh, from uh, uh, Fidelity itself, since my wife, she has worked. So they're uh, like, they have taken the project. It's a huge project, uh, two years project. And that project, uh, at least they need uh, 40 people. 
okay so again that is a strategic assessment so how they will come to know that 40 people are being needed for this particular project so then they need to uh, analyze first how big is the project and uh, what are the uh, modules are being part of this particular project all these things they need to analyze and for that they need to overall how many people are being needed for this particular project and they allocate first and once they allocate it next thing is they need to go for uh, program management in the program management they'll go in drilling down into the lower level and they'll identify a particular component and for that particular component how many are going to work and how many days they are going to work and what are the level they are going to work all these things they need to analyze and then they need to fix on it so that is all about uh, program management hope you understood now yes yes so thank you so much now evaluating the project is uh, depending on how it contributes to program goal for each and every program there will be a goal which will be set uh, by the, uh, the concern uh, uh, project team and uh, whether it has been contributing towards the goal which has been already created and its viability that is capability of developing are useful so when we are going for developing this particular uh, component or the module whether it is going to be useful whether it is viable because feasibility has become another important aspects. So uh, if it is not going to be benefit out, then it's, it's, it's no use of the creating this particular uh, project. So that's why viability has become another, uh, that's why they'll be saying that whether this particular business is viable or not. So if it is not viable, uh, you need not to go for starting the particular business. So viable has become another important aspects. And timing. So time to deliver has become another important aspects of any projects. If they are not uh, delivered in time, then it is going to be a waste. So you might have studied your software engineering itself. So time to uh, market and time to deliver. So that has become another key aspects. And resourcing. And we need to identify the right resource and which need to be get allocated for the job. So something like identifying the right person for the right job, that has become the key uh, important thing. So that is called resourcing. So these are the way we need to go for evaluating the project. So whether it is contributing towards the goal, Second one is it is viable and third one is the timing and fourth one is going to be a resource. So these are the way the project will be evaluated. And for successful strategic assessment, there should be a strategic plan which defines. Number one, organization objective. For each and every organization, there'll be an objective. So there'll be a goal which will be created and they'll be moving towards that particular goal to achieve on it. So for successful strategy assessment, every organization must have an objective. And second one is uh, provides a context for defining a program. So when are we going for defining any program, make sure that it has been uh, correlated with the objective which has been created by the organization. And it uh, pro provides a context for defining program goals. And again, for program level also, we need to have a goal which need to be set on it. And provide a context for accessing individual projects and we need to uh, provide the uh, access to the individual project that is also become a strategic uh, plan so number one objective number two we need to define what are the programs going to be part of that particular project and uh, for each and every program we need to define the goal and uh, for each and every uh, individual which has been involved in that particular project they, they, they can able to access on it so these are the things which will be defined during the strategic plan so if you plan like this, then it is going to be a successful strategic assessment. Right. In large organization. Sir, sorry, the previous slide, please, sir. Yeah, yes. Yes, Gibson. Any, any doubt? Just wanted to see that uh, the one, two, the fourth point, uh, the strategic assessment, like, uh, it's okay. about defining the project goals or the particular module components of the project goals. Uh, this one, third point you're talking? Third point, yes, sir. Yeah. Provides a context for defining programs. Yes, yes, yes. So now, uh, uh, first we need to, uh, organization have an objective. And next one, they'll be having a program. So you can uh, think about our college. Uh, college has an objective. And each uh, program, so program in the sense MCA is one program, MSc is another program, and uh, MSc psychology is going to be another program, and uh, 
BSE Computer Science is going to be another program. So we need to provide the context for defining the program. And for each and every program, we need to have a goal. For MCA, we have a goal, right? MCA, we define the goal. Uh, uh, college has a goal, uh, which has been towards achieving uh, uh, the higher heights into the market and reaching everybody in the world. But when you come to the program, it will defer. But it will be coordinating with the, uh, the objective of the college. So uh, MCA, it's all about technical course where we'll be defining the certain set of goals where uh, we want ultimately every student uh, uh, get the technical aspects of this particular course. And along with that, uh, the students need to be get uh, placed. And like that, there are certain goals which will be created uh, from our department. So for catering the needs of uh, different uh, set of students. So like that, each and every department uh, program, they'll be defining the goals. And once you define the goal and make sure that it has been accessed by every individual uh, uh, people, uh, part of that particular uh, program, so that only it will become uh, uh, achievable. Otherwise, become uh, not realistic one. So that's what they are trying to do. So that should be there in your uh, strategic plan. If it is there, then it is going to be a successful strategic assessment. Is that clear? Uh, gets yes, sir. Yes, yes. Okay. So uh, similar way, when they are taking any uh, projects, uh, project is going to be a program project is going to be project in that one part they are going to be called as a program and first we need to define the context for the particular program and for that program we need to set up goals for that program what are the goals we need to define at the beginning itself and once you set the goal and make sure that that has been accessed by the individual uh, projects so that is what they are trying to ensure right in large organization Program management is being taken care by your program director and program executives, rather than project manager who will be responsible for strategic assessment of the project. Now, if you take about a bigger organization, something like a multinational company, when you go for a multinational companies, uh, the program management is being taken care by the director and executives. Those people are being called as program directors and program executives. So instead of uh, project manager, so the project manager, what is the role of project manager? He'll be responsible for strategic assessment of the project. So he's the person who will be uh, assess the, uh, how we can able to uh, proceed further to reach the goal, uh, which has been set by the organization. So that has been taken care of by the project manager, right? Any potential software system will form part of the user organizations, overall information system, and must be evaluated within the context of existing information system and organization information strategy. Now, whenever you're going for uh, creating any of the system and make sure that uh, this particular uh, system has been, uh, have a proper information system. Why proper information system? Because from the top level till the lower level, the people need to get the information uh, whenever they need it. So where they need to have a proper information system should be created so that only uh, they will know that what is their role and what is their responsibility and what's supposed to be done. And uh, that is what uh, whenever you're going for joining any of the organization, they'll be providing the training, basically something like uh, what is your role and what you're going to do and what are the hierarchy in this particular organization and uh, the history behind it and uh, how to proceed further. So for, for example, if you want to take a leave, whom to approach and how to do that. And uh, if you uh, if your uh, task has been assigned, whom you are going to report on it, all those things will be uh, given uh, uh, as an information system. So that only you will be awareing of it and you will be reaching on it. And if you want any resources uh, to be needed, something like you need a hard disk or if you want the uh, uh, laptops or any other things, if it has been needed for uh, developing it, so where, uh, whom to approach and how to approach and how to get the work done. And similar way for transportation, so all these things that should be a proper information should, system should be created. And uh, for that, we need to have a strategy also. So that has been called as information strategy, organization information strategy that also will be discussed during the beginning of the year and in terms of different level. So uh, from the top level to the lower level, they'll be having information strategy and uh, how the information will be get passed. And uh, see, uh, it, I can give you another simple example from our uh, department itself. So. Uh, if it is going to be a uh, one day leave, if you are taking it, uh, you can get the approval from class animator itself. Suppose if you are uh, uh, falling sick 
and uh, you want to take at least uh, uh, three to four days of leave, then you need to uh, get the permission from the head of the department so that only we get approved. And uh, if you're going for more than that, something like uh, uh, one week or 10 days leave, you are uh, going for taking it. So during that time, what's supposed to be done, you need to uh, get the permission from the head of the institution. So from the principal, you need to get the uh, permission and then uh, through that, uh, you can go for uh, uh, later stage, uh, you can apply for a medical leave or some other leave, which, which will be sanctioned from the head of the institution. So that is what the uh, hierarchy has been set and that information has been passed to the uh, students and individual students will be aware of that. So that has been called as an information system. And for that, the beginning itself, we'll be having a strategy. In the strategic plan, we'll be discussing it, and then we'll be uh, uh, stating that this is the way that uh, should we get uh, processed. Uh, so this is all about information system. I hope you understand that what is information system. Any, any doubt on this information system? If a well-defined information system does not exist, then the system development and assessment of the project proposals will be based on a more uh, piece of meal approach. A piece of meal approach is one which each project being individually early in, in its life cycle. So uh, that's why they are saying should be a well-defined information system should be there. If it is not there, then the system development and assessment of the project proposals will be based on a more of a piece of a meal approach. So what is a piecemeal approach? So piecemeal approach is one which uh, each project's been individually uh, early in its life cycle. So here we need to go for uh, uh, analyzing it uh, uh, based on the project which you're getting it and then be analyzing it and then be doing on it. So uh, many times which will not be successful. Uh, so that's the reason why they are going for the strategic assessment and through that uh, they are making it a, a grand success of uh, whatever project they are taking in a companies. So if you're going for a piecemeal approach, then which may not be worked out for uh, large and complex projects, maybe for a smaller project and minor projects, which might work out, but sometimes that might also be a failure. So that's why better not to go for this particular piecemeal, uh, piecemeal approach. So better you go for a well-defined information system if you have it, so that will become properly done. So if the information system is not being created, and just imagine if you're going for starting the project and try to do on it, so there might be a confusion. Uh, one of the junior developer having a doubt and uh, if he doesn't, if he or she doesn't know about whom to approach and resolve this particular issue, then which is going to be one of the key issues. And uh, they should know that who are the decision makers. If they doesn't know who are the decision makers, that is also going to create an uh, issue. Because uh, in piecemeal approach, there, there won't be any kind of a proper defined system which will be created so that we doesn't know that who is going to the decision making authority. If you know it only, then we can approach the concerned person and then uh, the work will be get done. Uh, otherwise, it's going to be like uh, 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 properly will not be completed. So that's what they are trying to mean here. Hope you understood this point, uh, piecemeal approach. Right. So what are the typical uh, issues and questions to be considered during uh, yeah, strategic assessments? When I'm going for any of these strategic assessments, uh, always uh, there'll be uh, questions which would be arise. Uh, and uh, uh, here they are given some of the uh, questions in terms of issues they are considering. And uh, so the first one is going to be in terms of objective. First issue they are creating as objective. How will the proposed system contribute to the organization stated objectives? How? For example, might it contribute to increase and in market share? Right now, so uh, one of the key aspects of any of the organization, if you seen that they look out for a profit, and uh, their market share is being going uh, into their mar uh, share market. So that is what they look out for it. So that is a case. Uh, the proposed system which you are bringing, uh, or you are trying to take it up, whether which will be uh, contributing towards the objective which has been created by the organization. So if it is uh, moving towards the goal, then it's fine, well and good, then we can go for taking it. Up. Otherwise, it is going to be an issue. So that is the issue one. So these are the questions which will be arise during the strategic assessment. And number two is plan. How does the proposed system fit into its plan? Which existing system will it replace uh, or the interface with? how it will interact with the system proposed 
for later development. Now, uh, whenever you're going for any of the projects you're taking it, there should be a plan, right? So uh, whether this proposed system is going uh, according to the plan, what we have it. So that means uh, already the company will have a plan. So if there is a new project being coming and whether we can fit into this, whether we can able to do that. So which existing system, that means uh, uh, currently we have a uh, existing system which is being currently running on our organization. With that itself, we can able to do on it or we need to have some kind of a new system to be developed and to work on it. So that we need to check and how it will interact with the system proposed for later development also. Even if it is for later development, how it is going to contribute. All these things we need to discuss during the strategic assessment. Uh, because once you create particular applications and then you need to think from the multiple angles where this particular projects can be utilized for later development. So something like if something new project is coming, whether this can be contribute towards that. So something like a payment gateway, if you're creating a payment gateway, and if one more project is being coming, so whether we can utilize this payment gateway for other projects also, whether it is possible. If it is possible, it is well and good. So as an one-time investment, we can make it and create it and ready so that if some other project is being coming, so that the same payment gateway component which you can be utilized for even the other project also. So same model, we can use it. And based on the client need, there are some minute changes if it is needed, we can do it. Or if there is no need of changing it, we can as a component, we can directly fit it and then we can start working, uh, start doing it. So that's what they are trying to mean here. All these things we need to uh, analyze and that is also going to be another issue when they are going for a uh, strategic assessment. Right. Uh, issue number uh, uh, three, which is going to be an organization structure. So, uh, that is another issue. What effect will the new system have on the existing departmental and organization structure? For example, a new sales order processing system uh, overlap the existing sales and stock control functions. Now, uh, there'll be an organization sector. Each and every organization will be having a proper structure which will be created and accordingly they'll be start working on it. Now, uh, when there is a new system which has been uh, coming and whether it is going to be uh, collapse this uh, organization structure. So it should not be collapsed. And if it is going along with the existing system, then it's fine. Then we can go ahead and do that. Or if it is going to be creating an issue, then that is the case we need to think over and how we can uh, uh, solve this particular issue. So that is what they are trying to mean. Organization structure has become another important aspects. Uh, they'll be setting that uh, for junior developer and developer, and then they'll be having a uh, software engineer team leader. So then they'll be going into uh, project leader and project manager and uh, directors, then the vice president, then president, then they'll be going uh, going into a top level. So uh, there'll be a hierarchy which has been already created. When there is a new system is coming and where they are trying to replace this, and setting that I doesn't want this person, I want this person to be involved in this. So that is the case, there is a organization shift which is happening. So there is a change which is happening. When there is a change is happening, whether they will accept it. So they are asking some junior person to be work on this particular project instead of a senior person. So that is a case which will not collapse the system. So that's what they need to look out for it. And uh, if, if it is not going to be an issue and if it is going to be fine, then they can go ahead and do that. But if it is going to create an issue, then that is the case they have to think over and accordingly they need to do some adjustment and then make sure that it has been functioning. So that's what they are trying to uh, mean here. Right. And uh, next one is going to be MIS, Management Information System, which is one of the uh, key subject in um, in uh, MBA, those who are studying MBA. And even earlier, uh, when three-year uh, uh, MCA uh, was there that time during we have one paper called MIS management information system. So that is another uh, 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 subject where uh, we should be talking about how what is information system, how we can manage this particular information system and what are the things supposed to be done. All those things will be discussed under the MIS, right? So what the information system, uh, what information will the system provide and at what level in the organization? In what ways will it complement or enhance the existing management information system? Right. Now, uh, MAS, which is basically uh, nothing that uh, which is going to provide your complete information about uh, uh, your uh, company. So, from uh, top 
till the lower level the entire details you can able to know it and uh, which is the hierarchy and uh, what is the history behind it and who are all working on it entire detail will be getting on it and uh, from where you will be getting the resources and uh, uh, whom to approach how to approach entire thing will be given and the uh, rules and regulations will be already clearly defined on it so that has been called as mis management information system and here which is going to provide at what level in the organization so what level you can uh, that means each and every people have their boundary they'll be creating it and they cannot go beyond the boundary to uh, reach so they need to uh, play within the boundary to uh, work around and uh, when they are going for bringing at the new system and which is going to preach this particular uh, uh, or it is going to uh, create an issue and they need to check this particular uh, new system whether it is going to be complement or which is going to enhance the existing mis if it is going to enhance then it's fine well and good then we can go for taking this particular information system or if it is not going to be there that is a case better to avoid it so that's what they are trying to mean so that is another issue uh, which is comes under uh, strategic assessment and fifth one is going to be personal in what way uh, will the system propose system uh, affect manning levels and the existing employee skill base and what are the implications for the organization's overall policy on staff development and again the personal level also they need to uh, think about it it's not about only uh, thinking about the company so they need to think about their employees also so employee benefit they need to do on it so they are not contributing uh, for the employee uh, skill development and uh, the organization may not grow so that's the reason why if you seen that uh, each and every organization there will be a Uh, employee benefit scheme which will be given under that benefit scheme uh, uh, in terms of uh, personal growth so they want to enhance their skills so uh, from the company they need to provide the support so they can they can send for the training uh, for a new technology if the uh, employee has been willing to work so that they, they can send for a training and then uh, take take up the new training so that a new um, technology has been coming up in the market they learn it and then that can be incorporated for upcoming projects Uh, that is one thing and uh, they want to go for conference and then seminars workshops so uh, those things uh, they can provide the support along that if they want to do any certifications so they can provide them help uh, for the employees because if you go for a certification something like uh, if they want to do that uh, i already told you pmp certification if they want to do the pmp certification it become uh, more costlier so they need to spend around the 2 to 2.5 lakhs so they want to spend around 2.2 to 2.5 lakhs become not affordable for the uh, employees so that is a case what uh, uh, organization can do so they can contribute some amount uh, to the employees and uh, uh, tell them that uh, our contribution is much maybe like 50 percentage we can contribute so balance 50 percentage you put it and then you can complete the course or they can give 100 percentage also so certain organizations will be providing 100 percentage uh, contribution and they'll be uh, saying that you can complete your uh, Uh, certification so uh, from fidelity the same thing so fidelity what they have done is uh, uh, they told pmp certification if you are doing that so we will be providing the 100% support but with one condition so what is that condition you need to clear the uh, certifications if you are not clearing the certifications the, the whole amount need to be paid by the concerned employee if they are clearing it the company will take care of it so that is what a condition they are given so it's like uh, mainly for uh, the staff development so what kind of policies are being created uh, uh, in uh, companies for staff development that is become another very important thing so that need to be discussed during the uh, project uh, assessment or we can say strategic assessment okay so up to this i'm stopping uh, today's session so we'll be discussing uh, the next set of things during the uh, next class